Nityanandam. In today's video, I wanted to speak about a topic that Swamiji brought up during his Guru Purima, Guru Purima message this past weekend. Uh, and happy Guru Purima to everyone. Now, hopefully you got to celebrate with the Nityananda Sangha by um, either attending in person at one of our centers or in the Bangalore Adhinam itself or even watching at nityananda.tv. As always, Swamiji delivered an amazing um, Guru Purima message. And there were so many things, so many clicks as disciples, which um, I think everyone is still processing, including myself. But one of the things he, he uh, discussed and mentioned very strongly was uh, people or individuals using the word guru or calling themselves a guru without giving any source or credit to Hinduism, not even claiming Hinduism. And I found this to be so interesting for me being, I consider myself, you know, someone born and brought up in the West and um, obviously with an Indian, you know, cultural background and heritage with my parents, poor Russian parents being Indian, from India. And I could see the impact of people using the word guru and not claiming Hinduism, how this actually affects people. It may seem like a, a small thing, actually, because guru has been used in so many contests, contexts. It's been used to name softwares. It's been used in so many like very commercial or very casual instances, which may seem OK. And probably Hinduism won't, wouldn't really mind the use of the word guru if Hinduism was not cut out of the equation by some Hindus themselves and non-Hindus, but basically misappropriated the teachings from Hinduism, either completely cut out Hinduism or manipulated the teachings to suit their purposes, which can be very harmful to the, the, the disciple or the learner, and then they go on to call themselves a guru. Now, at the very foundation of Hinduism is the guru-disciple relationship. That's where the spiritual process starts and ends. And what many people try to do is because they have not understood the guru-disciple relationship, they have not experienced it, and they do not bother to look into it, they decide that they can cut themselves, cut that out, out of Hinduism. You don't have to have a guru. No one is forcing anyone to have a guru. But you cannot remove the guru-disciple relationship from Hinduism. Even if you don't feel strongly about having a guru, or you're even against the idea of having a guru, I'll save that for a different video. But I wanted to address those who call themselves guru and do not give, do not trace their heritage and back to Hinduism. This is very dangerous because the guru, the word guru itself means one who removes darkness. And for, in the truest sense, it's one who removes the darkness of the maya that we're created, that we have created, whether it's through the teachings, the just being in the presence of the guru, um, all the sadhana, tapas, everything, goes towards removing the darkness, but only through, under the direction and guidance of a guru can this happen. So there's a reason and utility value of having a guru in Hinduism. And there's a reason why it's the foundation of Hinduism. And there's, it's the reason why even Sadar Shiva actually bow in the Guru Gita, actually bows down to the guru, the concept of the guru. So by no means is there any logical or justifiable reason to remove guru from Hinduism, guru worship from Hinduism. But somehow people decide to do that, but then they want to use the word guru, maybe because it's just a four-letter word, four word. It has some quick understanding where people can understand what a guru means. It's a teacher, maybe they, people can understand a very surface level. So they grab onto that word, they use it to describe themselves, they use it to commercialize whatever teachings they've stolen or altered, and they go around parading as some quote-unquote guru. Now what happens is, because Hinduism has been so diluted, 
and Hindus themselves have not defended Hinduism, people actually start to understand the word guru in the context of these people who have no connection to Hinduism and are a disgrace to Hinduism. So what happens is when you are a seeker looking for answers to life's questions, whether it's who am I, what is my purpose in life, why am I here on planet Earth, what is my past life connection, when those start, questions start to bubble inside of a being, which we call them a seeker, and they start to gravitate to Hinduism, because of all of this crap that's out there about gurus and all of this um, wrong ideas and sentiments been um, put out on gurus by the media, by these leaders who so-called call themselves a guru, people have the wrong understanding and they develop a distaste for the idea of a guru before even trying it for themselves. And that's a horrible and very damaging thing that can happen to a being if the only thing that can actually lift them up and take answer the questions they want answered, give them the experience they need to grow in their spiritual path. If they're sidelined from that because of all of this wrong messaging, then it's like having giving cutting off the umbilical cord, which is their birthright. Everyone's birthright is to have a guru. And luckily, all of us, if you're watching this video, you're in a time where there's not just a guru in the traditional sense, there's a guru who is a living avatar, an incarnation of Sadashiva himself. But because of all of this propaganda and false news against gurus, many people are going to miss just because of this. And that's the crime. Fortunately, fortunately for me, my poor Vasha mother, the, my biological mother, she was a seeker herself. And she had read many books from different gurus, different masters. She visited many gurus. And because she had a positive attitude and receptivity to gurus, I had no resistance to the idea of guru. Never did I think I actually wanted one a guru of my own, but I wasn't against the idea. It was just something. But if you can imagine on the flip side, if from a very young age, you're told, oh, gurus are not required, or I don't want to worship a human being, or I can figure out this myself, or I just worship to Bhagwan and he knows, these are all fine. But at the end of the day, 100% sure this will not take that kind of think, that person with that kind of thinking to where they need to be spiritually. It may give them some satisfaction on a moment to moment basis, but it will not take them out of the incompletions and the ups and downs of life, which a guru does. So I'm going a bit in circles just to highlight this point that gets put under the cover because society seems to take the term guru very lightly. And either they take it lightly and it's almost like, oh, guru of um, software, a guru of project, managing, project management software, a guru of this or that. Those are not necessarily disrespectful, but those organizations, those companies are able to use that word guru in that context because there have been individuals who have used the word guru and call themselves selves a guru when they themselves don't um, acknowledge or practice Hinduism. So everyone is entitled to believe what they want to believe, for sure. But you have no right, and this is what Swamiji was saying, you have no right to use the word guru. Go use some other religions' titles for their um, priests and heads of uh, religion. See what they say. No, really. That is what a guru is. A guru is held at the highest level in Hinduism. But we Hindus don't say, no, you can't use that word. We just let it happen. Now, if you're using the word guru and you don't claim Hinduism, you should stop. As a Hindu, I'm telling you, you should stop. And you should go pick up some other religion's titles and see what they say. See how they respond to you. You won't do it because you know the reaction. But for Hindus, you know that there won't be any reaction. So this message is really for those who claim to be a guru 
and do not use Hinduism in their teachings, do not give credit to Hinduism. And it's a message to anyone who follows those types of people because it means they're not even integrated to the name that they've given for themselves, to the title they've given to, for themselves. It is pure fraudulence. So this is more of a warning message for anyone who's viewing and um, welcome any comments. Maybe this is a controversial topic for some, but I feel very strongly and I think Swamiji put it into such a very simple um, terms uh, during his Guru Purnima message, which if it's not already uploaded, it'll be uploaded soon and I'll share it on this site. So thank you so much and um, Nityananda.